What's up fellow hackers? It's time for reverse engineering. Last time we saw how to demodulate bits with the universal radio hacker. In this video I will show you how to reveal the logic of a protocol. This happens in the analysis tab, so let's open it and get things started. The bits from the interpretation phase gets loaded into this table and we can scroll the bits to get an idea what's going on. We may also change the view type to hex to get a better overview of the protocol and it looks like this. I can select certain messages and get uh, information for this message on the, on the top line. You can see I can watch the received signal strength and the timestamp for each message. I can also search for certain pattern patterns. Let's say I want to search for ABB, search for this and it selects the first occurrence of this pattern. I can also cycle through the results. If I want to hide certain rows, I can do that with a right click and hide that row or reset them to show them again. It's also possible to synchronize this view with the interpretation view. For example, if I want to know where this A comes from, I can say, okay, um, show me this in interpretation and it jumps right to the interpretation part and I am right on that A. Maybe we go into demodulated to verify one zero one zero. That's the A I got. I just uh, selected in the analysis. To get a initial idea of the protocol, we can highlight the differences between messages simply by clicking this checkbox. And you can see here the differences are marked red. So this indicates that on position 21 and on position 5 to 6 something is happening so there might be some interesting information which we will find out during this video. You can also assign participants to messages. In this case we had only one device we captured messages from so it it's kind of boring to assign participants to that, but let's do it nevertheless. You see, I assign participant A just to this message and um, I can also unassign it, no problem. Let me load a second signal into the analysis to give you a better impression of this feature and hide the first signal for now. If we go into the interpretation phase, you see that in this case there were two participants which you can see from the height of the signals which is equivalent to the received signal strength of a message. So for example this one here would be another participant than the following message. We can assign a participant to this message directly in the interpretation phase with the right click menu and you see the corresponding message is colored in this preview and in the signal view. To assign a second participant I first need to configure this in the project settings so let's do this right ahead via file project settings and add another participant here. Maybe we give this another name, call it Bob, accept and we can say this message, well that was from Bob. And now you can see it's colored in Bob's color which is in this case red. Of course we can also automate 
this kind of participant assigning because as you can imagine this is kind of a very boring task if you do this manually for many messages so you have the possibility to use this analyze button which has in fact several features for now let's just use the assign participants feature and let it do the dirty work for us you see all participants got automatically assigned based on the received strength information of the message so let's close this protocol as we do not need it for further demonstrations and get our first protocol back into the game now we come to a very big topic which is the decoding of the protocol you can choose the decoding here we have some decodings predefined for you which are common decodings like Manchester or a simple invert of the message so let's demonstrate this and you see now the whole stuff gets inverted you can see this a bit better if I switch to the bit view you see the above one is the inverted of the second line you can craft your own decoding to fit your needs um, in this dialog as you see we have some decoding primitives that you can chain in any order to um, fit the protocol you have in your application for example I can do an invert after that do a differential encoding and so on in this case I know that the protocol we use uses the wireless short packet standard which is already implemented into the universal radio hacker so let's just use it and save this as a new decoding which I will call an ocean so let's close this dialog and select all messages and assign the an ocean decoding to it now we switch back to hex and you can see here that I got zero errors for this message and if I scroll through the messages there are no errors of course this only works so good because this is a demonstration and we already made all the adjustments needed in the real world you would go back to the interpretation and make some adjustments for example if I put the noise a bit up then I can see here that the um, hash sum is not matching in no message so I would have to go back to the interpretation see what's wrong in this case it was the noise which was a bit too high so let's just put it back to where it was before and we are good to go if you have an encoding for a very complex protocol which is very very special and you cannot find it in the predefined decodings and you also cannot build it out of the decoding primitives you also have the possibility to use an external program which you can for example write a python script or a c++ program which does your encoding you can give the path to your external program here and use it right inside the universal radio hacker so you can crack every encoding you can imagine so let's close this dialog and see how we can work further at this stage we found out the correct encoding of the protocol let's apply it for all messages again and we can now start labeling the information to get an impression what's the logic behind these nibbles so in this case the AA indicates a preamble so let's add a protocol label for that the preamble is all already 
suggested, so I just hit enter. The next one is a synchronization nibble, which I will also assign and choose as type synchronization. For the next protocol fields, we need some an ocean specifics, so let's just add them to this project by using this edit menu and we one need a ROG and the TXID. Let's add them and I know from the an ocean specification that this is the ROG. This one here is uh, CRC, so let's assign this. This one is the TXID. So I actually missed two custom fields I need to add, so let's do this and add them. The first we need to have is the end of frame and the next one is the data. So the data is right here, assign a label to it and this one is the EOF which indicates the end of the frame, the end of the message. And there we have it. You see that for each label I assigned, there is added an entry in this table. I can also set the display format for this value. So let's set this to hex and this also to hex. And let's walk a bit through the messages. You can see that the values for the labels are updated for each message and you can easily keep an overview on the values of the labels just by going through the messages. If you have a more complex protocol with um, different message types, this is also supported. You can add your custom message types here. So if you have, for example, a protocol that sends acknowledgement frames, you can just add a new acknowledgement message type um, by default, all labels that you have assigned to the default message type are copied to new message types, but I could also delete some of these labels in the acknowledgement message type. So let's delete this ones. And if I assign this acknowledgement message type, for example, to this message, you see that it only has left these two labels. So let's set the message type back to default and we are good to go. You can also assign these message types automatically. If you use this menu, you can assign them automatically at custom rules for that must apply to uh, for this message type. And if you then hit the analyze button, it will automatically assign these message types for you. But in this case, we don't need multiple message types. We only have one message type and are good to go with the default one. So this is our final view on the protocol. Now we have reverse engineered the protocol and are ready to generate our custom signals in the generation phase. If you want to learn more about this, be sure to check out the next video. So long, hack like a boss.